get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Matt Miller. He's founder of School Spirit Vending. The combined efforts of his businesses and his franchisees' businesses with this allowed them to sell over 5 million stickers last year. They're on track for 7 million this year and they help they do this all by helping schools raise funds. School Spirit Vending has accumulated over 12 million dollars in sales over the past few years. Matt, thanks for joining me. Jeremy, thanks for having me on, man. I'm excited to be here. Me too. And so did you ever think you would sell over 12 million dollars worth of stickers? <laughs> no, I, I mean, of course, if you look at my life, I mean, it makes total sense. Anybody could have predicted it that I would have gone from academy grad, Air Force pilot, <laughs> to being a vending operator selling stickers in schools. I mean, isn't that the it's normal a clear you know, path. work path? <laughs> it's a clear path. So, with this journey, um, what were you thinking early on? I mean, if you weren't thinking, okay, I'm going to make $12 million and in stickers. What were you thinking when you first started this? No, dude, I, it was all about survival yeah. for a long, long, long time. You know, we got ourselves in a real hole. Uh, in my corporate career, there were some decisions made my second year in the advertising industry. I ended up being number two in the country out of 700, mm. 750 sales reps. Boss didn't like it. She ended up, uh, increasing my quota 90 plus percent the next year and i went from being a hero to a zero overnight i ended up uh getting myself into a world of hurt financially and and we're set back about eighty thousand dollars a year in commission and bonuses for the next year yeah so we got ourselves into a deep hole and it took a long time to work out yeah that's a tough tough time what did that look like like emotionally what was going on you know because i experienced that factually but well like give me an example of something that was really tough at the time that you think back on and maybe laugh at now well i mean let's face it you know i did pretty well in school i went to the air force academy i was quote unquote america's finest right as an air force pilot yeah and here i am man financially in a place that i never imagined i'd be and there were days where of course i questioned you know what i was doing you know all those types of things because you just don't envision yourself being in that place you know it got so low at one point in time that you know my son and i were literally collecting aluminum cans wow. uh, to keep food on the table i got turned down for a payday loan uh, at one point for just a couple hundred dollars to pay a bill. Now, here's the thing. You don't have to have a credit rating to get a payday loan. Mm. But the challenge is that I had a couple of overdrafts on my bank account, and they had to see a bank statement from the previous month. And in the process, I got turned down. So talk about being lower than low. But But here's what I knew during all that, Jeremy. Mm. I knew that I was better than that. Mm-hmm. And I knew it was situational. It was circumstances, much of which was outside of my control. So I had to get focused on figuring out a solution to get out. Right. And so one of the things I've been blessed with is the opportunity to look longer term and to focus longer term and not to get caught up in all the day-to-day details. Yeah. And and that's what helped us get out of yeah. of that situation. <laughs> Yeah, and Matt, for someone who they may be going through that now or maybe they will go through that, how do you handle that with the family? You know, what do you tell your son when you're collecting aluminum cans? Because that's a tough, <laughs> you know, that's we a were, tough we were pill to swallow. We were blatantly honest. Yeah. Yeah, we were, I mean, we were just blatantly honest and, and we let the kids know. And, 
and we let them know that, hey, there isn't a whole lot of money right now. I, I'll give you an example. I, you know, it's funny. I, <laughs> I'm probably going to start crying here. Pretty sad, but... That anyway, means that means I, I will I will probably start crying too. That <laughs> <laughs> is most likely. <laughs> I, I've never told the story. I don't think on an interview before. Anyway, it got so bad, and and my wife and my three kids' birthdays are all in late August, early September, right all in a row. It got so bad financially that we couldn't afford birthday cake or anything. Mm. So we literally went to the store. And got York peppermint patties, got a couple of candles, and the York peppermint patty ended up being our birthday cake. Wow. And today, we still use that as our birthday cake. I love that. As a reminder of where we were. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's tough. I appreciate you sharing that because I know people listening either have gone through it or will go through it at some point, and it helps to hear how you handled it. You know, and it sounds like you just you just kind of laid it out there for everyone. That's tough to do. We laid it out there. We got creative, and my kids never saw Dad sitting around looking for a handout or yeah. wondering how it was going to happen. They saw Dad in action yeah. constantly trying to figure it out. Matt, you know, since it's Inspired Insider, I always ask about the low point and how you push through and the proudest moment. And we talked a little, I mean, about one of the low points, which is around the birthdays. At that point when you had to go and get peppermint patties and that's what you used, how did you push through that time when that's what you were going through? I looked at this as building a brick wall, Jeremy. And I knew that my income was directly related to the number of machines I had out on the street. Yeah. And so if I wasn't where I needed to be at the time, I could be. All I had to do is keep going back and doing what I did the first time with another machine in another location over and over and over and over again. And eventually, step by step, I worked, I built that brick wall of income. And I worked us out of our hole. Yeah. And then when I came upon an idea that all kinds of people around me got excited about and wanted to be a part of, I realized that, wow, it's it doesn't just have to be me doing the work anymore. I've got something here that has value that I can teach others. <clears throat> in exchange for teaching them, I can get some benefit from what they do too, originally with the distributor model and licensing. And of course it's grown from there. But, you know, initially it was okay, I got enough money to go buy another machine. I went and bought another machine, got the stuff to put in it, and then found a location. And then I went to get another machine and another and another. And a lot of people out there, because of our microwave society today, probably would have a challenge building it that way but i didn't have any choice right. so i was forced to be patient even though patience is not in my vocabulary normally right do people um your franchisees still only go after schools or do they place them in other places as well uh, we do locations uh, primarily schools but you know they've got the ability to place equipment wherever they want to yeah. um so the proudest moment. What's been the proudest moment? You know, aside from seeing my newest, uh, uh, the new people on the team get their first locations on their own, I think my proudest moment was, um, you know, the first trade show that we did when I had this crazy idea. We had one school that was willing to give it a try. Right. And the confirmation that what we were doing was unique and special by those 10 PTA moms who, who wanted to implement our program in their schools. Yeah. What about fast forward today? Something selfish you're proud of Like you went from, you know, collecting aluminum clan cans. What do you, you know, do today that you think back and go, wow, like I've come so far from that time. Uh, 
Uh, you know, to be able to pay cash for my kids' school mm-hmm. and to know that they're going to college and will mm-hmm. not have any student loans when they get done. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, is is a huge thing for us. Um, because my parents weren't able to do that for me, obviously, and it was something that we really wanted to do yeah. <clears throat> for our kids, so that they would potentially have six figures of debt that yeah. they started out there, you know, right out on their own with. So we've been able to uh, to thus far been blessed to, to be able to take care of school for my oldest and our second uh, start school here this next uh, fall. And uh, how old's your that's, oldest? I think the biggest thing. Hey, he's oh. nineteen. Oh, cool. Okay. So where's he going? He goes to Hillsdale College in Hillsdale, Michigan. Cool. All right. So, does he tell you what he wants to do? Uh, he's majoring in uh, economics with a minor in graphic design. He actually was our first graphic designer at ten years old. Really? And so he has oh, spent cool. the last yeah he spent the last nine years learning graphic design um, as part of our business initially, and then uh, now he does business and and helps out companies with web design and app design as well as graphic stuff. He's already cut his teeth and, for a decade. Uh, so we were able to Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And he's really 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 talented. So it's pretty pretty cool to have been just a little part and you know provided the environment for him to do that. Yeah. Matt, this has been really valuable. I appreciate you sharing these stories cuz they they can't be easy to share um, cuz they really hit close to the heart. Um, so I have one last question, but before I ask it, just tell people, uh, where they can find you. And I know you have a really awesome free resource for people too. Yeah. So they can reach me, Jeremy at Matt, M A T T at S S V business.com. Or, um, if they'd like, I've got a free ebook, uh, for download for your audience, Um, they can go to ssvbusiness.com forward slash inside or excuse me, forward slash inspired. Mm -hmm. And the the ebook's called live your dreams, the top 10 reasons why you need to own a vending business. And I just shed a little bit of light on the value of having a vending business. Um, it has nothing to do with our franchise per se, but it'll at least give folks some insights into vending in general. And if they'd like to reach out and ask questions just about gen- about vending, or if they'd like to reach out and talk more specifically about SSV and and helping schools in their area, I'd love to chat with them about that as well. Thanks, Matt. So people should definitely check out that resource. We'll link it up, and then also SSVBusiness.com where you can find out more about that. Um, the last question, Matt, and comic books. So you have a comic book company. Right? We didn't talk <laughs> yeah. about this at yes, all. Yes, I do. So, I mean, fun fact, which I didn't mention in the beginning, but you um, actually were in a school play and played Superman tights and all, and you have a comic book <laughs> business. So, <laughs> I want a picture of that for, yeah, so the, was... for this post. Do you have a picture of that somewhere? Of you in I think that. my parents had that. Well, I want it scanned and emailed to me <laughs> for this. <laughs> if I can find it, I'll let you know. I'll, I'll have to check with my mom and dad. I'm pretty sure they've got one somewhere. I want that. But, yeah. Um, yeah, my, my, my senior year in high school, yeah, I played Superman in the musical Superman and had the, the uh, tights and, and everything. Um, as far as the comic book stuff, yeah. I was inspired to read early on in my life by reading comic books. Mm. And when I got older and we started doing work in schools and all that, I was like, you know what? I not only have an obligation here to, to teach our team how to make money and to help schools raise money, but I really feel like I've got an obligation to give back to the kids that are our customers within those schools. Mm-hmm. And since I was inspired to read with comics early on, I decided that I'd love to start a principled based comic book series that taught principles and it was something that parents could be excited about their kids reading 
instead of a lot of the darker, uh, yeah. more adult themes that the comic industry has kind of gone in that direction of. Yeah. Tell me about principle-based. So what do you mean by principle-based? Like, give me an example. Just Meaning we talk about, you know, character, character traits and, and honesty and friendship and, mm. and trustworthiness and, mm-hmm. and a lot of those types of things instead of some of the darker themes. Right, right. And so I hired a couple of young guys out of Baylor University. They they graduated a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them is the writer and the other is the, the artist. And we started a comic book series. That's and cool. Marlon and Percy are featured in our vending machines with just about every vend. But then we've also written um, and published five full-length, full-color comics to date. Those can be found at marlinandpercy.com or on Amazon uh, in ebook or Kindle format. And we actually Hmm. just completed, we haven't uh, done all the edits yet, and it's not available for release, but we just completed a 200 plus page children's novel as well. Well, um, Marlon and Percy are a couple of, apes. they're a couple of apes that want to be superheroes. And so anyway, yeah. it's really, real cool, really cool story. The artwork is just off the charts Yeah, and just really excited about that. They kind of are the bazooka Joe over sticker machines. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's Marlon M A R L I N and Percy P E R C Y dot com right correct yeah correct so which one's your favorite comic which character or no, which comic which comic yeah uh in our series or elsewhere your your series <clears throat> yeah i would say the last one number five uh is that my favorite to date, and the re- reason for that is just because as Caleb and Tyler have grown and have gotten better the last couple of years, I mean, they've just outdone themselves on the storyline and mm. the artwork. It's called Snow Monkeys, Snow Problems, uh, Marlon and Percy number five. Okay. And uh, it's about snow monkeys that are ninjas. And uh, anyway, it's awesome reading the kids love it adults love it and like i said there's five of them available today and we will have a children's uh, novel coming out soon as well love it matt this has been so much fun thank you so much thank you jeremy i appreciate the opportunity to be on and god bless man yeah thanks what i got you can't buy it resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See, life's like a peach if you find the sand And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand 